I'm gonna do a video on how to find the moment of inertia of a cylinder, okay? Moment of inertia I cover in Physics 1. It is a very, very fascinating topic. I have uh, quite a bit of videos online how to find the moment of inertia of a rod, a uniform rod, non-uniform rod. I have videos on how to find moment of inertia of different types of shapes. I also have a video on how to find the moment of inertia of different graphs. So the one that uh, I need to cover I want to add to that list is I want to do cylinder and I want to do also spheres okay so let's start with cylinder if you have a cylinder like this what are the different ways of rotating the cylinder well one is you can rotate the cylinder around the axis going through it cutting it right through the middle right a lot oftentimes this is known as the z-axis so we call this iz or sometimes known as also izz okay so this is the moment of inertia of a cylinder when you make the cylinder roll right you can have a table have the cylinder sitting like this and have the cylinder spinning around its axis going down so the cylinder will rot uh, rotate this way around this axis it turns out that for a uniform cylinder, IZZ is equal to MR squared over two, okay? The other way of rotating the cylinder is to rotate it around the axis cutting it this way. So to visualize that, visualize the cylinder like this, okay? And the cylinder will turn like this. And so this one is called IXX or IYY. -Y. You can, since the cylinder has symmetry about the x-y axis, you can rotate it like this, or you can rotate it about the axis cutting it this way. We can call this one the x-axis, the y-axis. So either we can rotate it this way, okay, around the y-axis, or we can rotate it uh, around the uh, x-axis, it would be this way, right? So it goes like that around the x-axis. The z-axis, it would turn like this. So the x and y are the same. It turns out that the IXX, this is equal to 1 12th ML squared plus half of IZZ. So whatever the IZZ of the cylinder is, we have to take half of that and we, took, we take 1 12th ML squared. Well, you can kind of see where this one is coming from because the cylinder is acting like a rod. And if a rod rotates around its halfway, uh, the moment of inertia we have already proven is 1 12th ml squared. On top of that, you have to visualize that the cylinder, the side face of the cylinder, the cross-sectional area, okay, is basically rotating about an axis going like this, right? This side one, okay, over there. So if it rotates like this, what is its moment of inertia? That one is going to be half of IZZ, right? So if uh, the cylinder happens to have no length, the length was zero, what would be its IXX? It would be half of IZZ. So take, for example, a coin. I have a nickel here, okay? The nickel is an example of kind of like a cylinder, but the length is very, very small, right? It's like this. So we could apply this equation and concepts to the nickel as well. We can uh, rotate it this way, right? In which case we would basically go like this, turn it like this, and we could actually throw it up in the air like that, right? It would go like this. That would be IZZ, right? So what would that equal to? It'd be half MR squared. We could also take the nickel or quarter or whatever, and we could rotate it this way. Well, this is actually more common way of rotating it. You just flip the coin. It's turning around the axis, cutting it in half. So what would that equal to? Well, it would be missing the L, right? The L is missing. So it's just essentially half of IZZ. And since IZZ is half MR squared, it'd be one fourth MR squared. So in other words, this is easier to rotate. It's only one-fourth MR squared. It's easier to rotate than this. If I exert the same torque on the coin like this, and I exert the same torque like this way, okay, which one is going to spin faster? This one, okay? Torque equals I alpha. 
Since the moment of inertia of this is half of the moment of inertia of that, this one will spin twice as fast, okay? And it's kind of easy to see that because the distance here is uh, closer to the axis of rotation right there, right? Here, since it's spinning this way, like that, the distance is uh, farther from the axis of rotation, right? So this one is harder to rotate. So what I want to do in this video is prove this equation, the MR squared over 2, and I want to prove this equation, half of IZZ, where that is coming from. Since I've already proven the 1 12th ML squared, I don't have to do that again, okay? So let's go over here. D, what I do is I take a cylindrical shell cylindrical shell and then I apply the definition of moment of inertia I say the moment of inertia of that shell is equal to r squared dm the mass of that little shell right then I define a volume mass density rho which is defined as dm dv okay it's how much mass is concentrated in a certain volume so therefore, D, dm is going to equal rho dv. Now, if the cylinder is uniform density, the rho comes out of the integral. You get rho integral r squared dv. <clears throat> At this point, I'm going to integrate over all the pieces, right? So i is going to equal rho um, Actually, I should have just said in the beginning, I should have just said uh, I is R squared dm, right? Uh, I is R squared dm. And basically later on to, to uh, yeah, so I should have said actually di is just R squared dm, R squared rho dv. And then the integral comes later on because I sum up over all those moments of inertia and then I get the complete moment of inertia. I equals rho then integral r squared. Now, what's dv? What's the volume of a cylindrical shell? Well, it's the, if this is r, dv is 2 pi r dr times the length of the cylinder. So 2 pi r is the circumference of the cylinder, of, of the cylindrical shell. dr is the thickness, l is the length. Okay, so if I, this one, 2 pi L, comes out. 2 pi L is constant, so then you have R cubed dr. Then you integrate that from what? From 0 to big R. Okay? So you integrate that from 0 to the radius of the cylinder, and then you integrate that, so what do you get? I is equal to 2 pi L rho, and then R to the fourth over 4. Okay, now what is rho? Well, if rho is uniform, then rho will equal to the mass of the cylinder, the whole mass of the cylinder, divided by the whole volume of the cylinder. So it's equal to pi r squared L, since uh, it's a, cylind a circular cylinder, and then times L, right? So we could substitute that. Uh, rho is equal to m over pi r squared L. So what's going to happen here? Well, pi is going to cancel pi, L cancels L, pi is equal to what? M, 2 and 4 cancel, M r squared r to the 4th cancel, M r squared over 2. So that is the moment of inertia of the cylinder with respect to the z axis, right? So you get M r squared over 2. The other way you could do that is by utilizing uh, double integrals or uh, triple integral to um, dm times uh, r squared dm. So now what's going to happen? r squared is this distance here, r. So what we, what we do if we're going to do double integral, x-axis, so that would be a right-handed uh, uh, cylindrical system, right? So you have uh, dm is going to equal... Um, the density times dx, dy, dz, right? Um, 
What's r squared going to equal? Well, r squared is going to be, since I want to find the distance from here to here, right? The distance of that shape from the z-axis, right? So it's going to be, r squared is going to be x squared plus y squared. So you have di is equal uh, x squared plus y squared rho dx dy dz. Now, what's the equation of the cylinder, right? The cylinder's equation is x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, right? So you have uh, x squared plus y squared, uh, r squared. Z can be anything, right? So Z, Z just goes from 0 to L, from 0 to L. So it could be basically anything since it's just uniform all the way uh, up and down, right? So uh, we're going to now integrate this, right? So what should we do? Is at this stage that we notice that this is going to end up becoming a hard integral to do in regular rectangular coordinates. Because what we're going to end up doing is integrating in terms of x here from 0 uh, to square root of uh, r squared minus y squared uh, for the x. And if we try to integrate this, we're going to get x cubed over 3 plus y squared x. We're going to have to put this uh, square root of r squared minus y squared in there. And it's not going to be an efficient way of carrying out this integral. So what we end up doing here is choosing um, cylindrical coordinates since this is a cylinder. And so it makes it a lot easier. So what we do instead is we just say, OK, di is going to be r squared. We keep it as r. OK? And we do our triple integral. And then we do rho. And then the dx dy dz in cylindrical coordinates becomes what? r dr d theta dz, where z is again the vertical axis, d theta is the angle around the circle, and r dr is the radius times dr. So this is the typical integral in the cylindrical coordinates. So now we can carry this integral much more easily. Okay? So the i is going to equal what? So we're going to integrate here in terms of r. r squared times r gives you r cubed. And r goes from 0 to r. And then we can do the theta, which goes from 0 to 2 pi, because we're going all the way around. Okay? And z goes from 0 to l. Okay? And of course, the mass density rho comes out of the integral. 0 to r just gives you r to the fourth over 4. And of course, the integral of d theta just gives you um, theta from 0 to 2 pi. Right? So that just gives you 2 pi. So this ends up being a very, very simple inter integral in cylindrical coordinates. Integrate uh, dz from 0 to l, we just get l. Okay? Then we have the rho, which is the mass density. So we have mass divided by pi r squared l. So let's see what all of this gives us. The pi cancels the pi. The r squared cancels one of the r to the fourth, so it becomes L, uh, r squared. L cancels L. 2 cancels 4, 2. So we get m r squared over 2. So in cylindrical coordinates using triple integrals, the moment of inertia of the cylinder easily comes out m r squared over 2. Now let's do uh, the ixx. We want to prove that um, if you cut the cylinder in half, that the moment of inertia is going to be half of izz, and then we can add that to m r squared over 12. Okay, so 